guys so um what you are looking at right now is one of the webster's pages traveler's notebook this is the natural one and um yeah if you're of a uh, nervous disposition or you are a planner traveler's notebook purist then you might not want to watch this video just warning you Um, you probably know what I'm going to do by the fact that I've said that because I've said that once already in a video and that was when I did this. Uh, this is a Webster's Pages planner, the, uh, the blue that I painted with a cloud pattern. And yeah, you probably guessed it, I am going to be painting this little beauty. Um, so the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to um, remove the elastic um, that obviously goes around so that I don't have it in the way um, and it's going to interfere with my painting and then I am going to cover it with some um, acrylic gesso because I do want uh, a nice uh, white canvas to work on I don't know why I just feel like that and sometimes just the act of putting some gesso down sometimes helps to um, prepare me creatively for um, creating um, but yeah when I used the uh, when I did it on the Webster's the blue I didn't put anything down just painted I think I can't remember anyway I may have put a matte medium down first um, but anyway yeah and people have, have asked me in videos how this is worn and absolutely fine no problem whatsoever so I'm really excited to be um, customizing this little beauty so here we go So obviously I took the elastic off, took the note, the um, inserts out and just kind of flattened it out. And then as I said, I just um, gave it a nice kind of quite a thin, to be honest, coat of gesso. Didn't need it. You know, you don't need to put it on. I just sometimes, as I said, just the act of painting kind of helps you get in the mood. So then it's kind of time to do a little bit of a sketch. So I just grabbed one of my um, Prismacolor pencils and just did a really rough um, sketch of a bunny. I did do a tutorial on my YouTube channel um, a while ago now on how, like a tutorial series on how to draw one of my bunnies. So go check that out um, if you're interested and I kind of break it down step by step for you. Um, my gesso was a bit wet in places so um, I did have a bit of gesso on my um, pencil that I needed to clear off but yeah just a really rough sketch as you can see it's a little bunny holding a little blue So next up is um, starting the painting. I just painted the one ear in a uh, kind of an ochre colour to see if I um, liked it, and I did. And then I went on to um, painting the background, and I used this gorgeous um, teal turquoisey colour. It's very similar to the colour that my room is painted. And it's just like my favorite color um, I did kind of like quite a um, a light going over so you can see some of the like the natural the base underneath coming through and that's fine I wanted it like that a bit transparent so that um, kind of gave the illusion a little bit of um, clouds in the sky and in fact I then um, used some gesso um, to kind of put some um, clouds in just some nice little wispy clouds that I'm dabbing on with just a kind of a, a stiff um, stiff brush and I do later on go over those um, and yeah time to paint the balloon I loving this color hot to pink and I just felt like that would be a really nice color for a bright happy little balloon So next up it's painting the bunny and um, I did uh, one coat and then I let it dry and then I did a, um, a second coat just to make it um, more opaque but in between doing the second coat 
Um, I love using portfolio oil pastels in most of my paintings. And so my natu it's my natural go-to for me. Um, so I went to <laughs> with those and I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it. So I kind of abandoned those. And then I decided to do um, my shading with just some different colored brown um, acrylic paints. I just like to kind of give it a bit of depth and dimension. So I used um, two different color paints and just kind of went over the areas that I felt would um, look nice to have a bit of, bit of shading and a bit of extra color. Next up, it's time to put his little face in. And um, as you know, with most of my bunny characters, well, pretty much all of the characters that I paint or draw have big, bold cheeks. Um, and my little bunnies always have little pink noses and little pink cheeks. That's just the way I like them. Um, so I start off with um, using a pastel, sort of a baby pink color and um, I give the balloon another coat of the hot pink and then I start adding some of the um, hot pink to the cheeks on the bunny and I go backwards and forwards a little bit with that kind of um, bit of hot pink, bit more baby pink, bit more hot pink, bit more baby pink just kind of keep blending it until I get to the kind of the colour and the look that I want, there's no kind of formula and I also added some of the baby pink to the balloon, as you can see up the top there. That's just to um, give it like a little bit of a, a, a light, a little bit of a shimmer, um, as if the light was catching it. And of course, adding in, um, just again with black acrylic paint, uh, my balloon um, tail, string, I don't know, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, just kind of titivate a little bit backwards and forwards with his face. Um, give him some little lies because my characters, you know, they don't come alive, I think, until you've got the eyes um, painted in. And once they've got their eyes in, they just they just come alive. And I always put um, a little bit of white on the eyes as well to give them a catch light, which I do a bit later. At the moment, I'm just using a bit of gesso. Um, the gesso was starting to dry and um, I've got quite dry fingers. And so I just kind of rubbed a little bit of gesso onto the tummy, um, inspired by my Florence bunny who's got a white tummy. Um, and <laughs> just to give him a bit of a white tummy, I'm kind of scratching the paint a little bit with my dry finger, um, just to kind of give it a rough, furry kind of look. Um, and I also add just a little bit of um, a, a yellow, I can't remember if it was a yellow or a yellow ochre to the tummy as well, just to kind of give it that extra kind of something. I wasn't really um, massively happy with the clouds, so I decided to go over the clouds again. I used gesso again and just kind of painted them in so they were a bit bolder, that bolder, <laughs> bolder this time, rather than um, kind of dappled and wispy and I much prefer the look of them. I think they look a lot nicer, um, bold. I think my advice whenever you're painting something is if you're not sure, always just kind of less is better because you can always add to it, whereas you can't take away. So if I'd have done those bold clouds initially and I didn't like it, then I would have been um, stuck with them. So always, in my opinion, better to go back and um, add something to it if you want to. So I'm just adding the little highlights, as I said, a bit of catch light in the eye um, and um, a little bit of a glint to the nose and the 
cheeks. I'm now taking some more, um, a different colour blue um, acrylic paint with my finger and I'm just sort of smudging it in. I wasn't really sure where I was going, I just knew I wanted something else, I wasn't quite happy with it. And then I take some more of that turquoise colour and I blend it in and I kind of go backwards and forwards a bit blending um, as I go. Um, you know when you look at a piece and you kind of, I knew it wasn't finished but I wasn't sure why, why it wasn't finished and what it needed um and I, uh, yeah it's kind of like a bit of an experimentation and um i think it kind of turned out kind of turned out cool i like it i only did it in the three places um but i like how it turned out so next up i'm a big fan of um splatters i do like splatters i think they add something i'm not gonna lie i'm a splattery person so i just like watering down my acrylic paint and just splatting yes it's very therapeutic i think to splat um there is actually an art form to it i swear because if you're not careful it just goes absolutely everywhere uh, sometimes i use a toothbrush which is really good because you can like run your thumb over it and get some really good splatting but i was just using a paintbrush i did do a little bit of an oops which i kind of blotted up and um made good again with some more of that uh turquoise and i think it looked fine I think I recovered it okay. Um, and I did a few colours. I did um, did purple splats. I did the hot pink splats. And I also used some gesso to do some white splats as well. And yeah, I just think it kind of helps to give it a little bit of something that when you can't quite work out what it needs, it, it, you know, you know, it just needs a little bit of something. Um, so yeah, I think it worked really nicely. Um, off camera, I because I forgot to film, I put a little bit of watered down purple paint on the base of the clouds and just um, blended that in as well to give them a little bit of um, definition and a little bit of oomph. And I also painted some pink on the ears of the bunny as well. I did that off camera. So I was going to put the brown elastic back on and then when I kind of compared it, I was thinking, hmm... No, I don't think so. And so I already had um, a white elastic. And so I decided to put a new elastic in the back in the in the notebook rather than the brown because I just think it looks a little bit um, a little bit nicer with my cover now. Um, so yeah, just filling up the notebook with some inserts. It, they don't look anything without inserts in, I don't think. You need them to kind of bulk it up. Um, and so it kind of fits nicely um, and that's it that's my my customized bunny dory um, lots of fun to do if you fancy giving it a go just go for it and if you do I would love to see your photos of what you come up with so yeah thanks for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed this little video bye